Chronic kidney disease is a gradual failure of kidneys over months or years. It is mainly caused due to the complication of a serious medical condition. The fall in renal activity is so gradual that until complete kidney failure, almost no symptoms are seen. Kidneys are equipped with millions of nephrons that continuously filter out and remove waste products and extra fluid from the blood and discharge them as urine. If a nephron is damaged, it cannot function anymore, and the only remaining functioning nephrons can carry out all the filtering processes. However, when the number of damaged nephrons are too high, the remaining filters cannot take all the workload, which results into the accumulation of waste products and in turn leads to further serious irreversible complications. Kidney damage is measured through glomerular filtration rate, also known as GFR, which is calculated by a doctor considering factors such as blood creatinine test results, age, gender, weight, and body size. Based on the degree of the damage, there are five stages of chronic renal failure. Stage one is when the GFR is greater than 90 milliliters a minute. Stage two is when the GFR is between 60 and 89 milliliters a minute. Stage three is when the GFR is about 30 to 59 milliliters a minute. Stage four shows a severe reduction in kidney function with a GFR between 15 and 29 milliliters a minute. And stage five is kidney failure with a GFR of less than 15 milliliters a minute. Chronic kidney disease is caused by other health complications. One common condition causing complications is diabetes mellitus. This is due to sugar building up in the blood and damaging the tiny capillaries in the body and the tiny filters in the kidneys. Uncontrolled high blood pressure is another condition that weakens, narrows, and hardens the arteries around the kidneys. As a result, the supply of oxygen and nutrients to the nephrons are reduced or stopped, leading to its failure of function. Another condition commonly causing chronic kidney disease is glomerular nephritis, which is the inflammation of the glomeruli, or the small blood vessels of the kidneys. The signs and symptoms usually appear in the advanced stages of kidney failure. These symptoms include nausea, vomiting, changes in urine production, shortness of breath, fatigue and weakness, loss of appetite, bad breath or bad taste in the mouth, muscle twitches and cramps, reduced mental sharpness, hiccups, sore feet and ankles, constant itching, chest pain due to the accumulation of fluids around the lining of the heart, and high blood pressure that is hard to control. There are a variety of different diagnostic tests to determine kidney failure. Kidney damage is irreversible and it is better to detect it early and make sure appropriate medical measures are taken. Blood tests include the GFR. For a healthy individual, the normal rate is greater than 90 milliliters per minute. And value less than 60 indicates kidney damage. Less than 15 indicates kidney failure and the patient needs transplant or hemodialysis. Serum creatinine is a waste product that is removed in the urine. Women should have a level less than 1.2 and men should have a level less than 1.4. Higher than this means the kidney are not functioning properly and may mean the onset of kidney failure. BUN level of 7 to 20 is normal. Other exams include a urine test. During the normal filtration process, Protein in blood that is too large to pass through the nephrons are kept out of the urine. But when the kidneys are damaged, their substance may appear in the urine, which is an indicator of kidney disorder. Imaging tests and ultrasounds are needed to determine the size and position of the kidney and the location of abnormalities such as kidney stones. CT scans are also used to obtain a clear picture of any obstructions and structural abnormalities of the kidneys. In some cases, a kidney biopsy may be necessary for prevention and treatment. Chronic renal failure is irreversible, therefore it is important to get treatment as soon as possible. It is necessary to prevent remaining nephrons from shutting down. Diet modification is the primary measure needed to prevent excessive workload on the kidneys. The patient should have a high carb, low protein, low salt, less fluids, and supplements to help electrolyte balance. A normal blood sugar level should be maintained. Prescribed medications for high blood pressure should be taken. A change in lifestyle needs to be considered which includes regular physical exercise and no smoking. 
Dialysis filters blood using a membrane that functions as the kidney to remove waste products and excess fluids. There are two types, peritoneal dialysis, which is a natural membrane and abdomen cavity used as a filter. Fluid is accumulated in the peritoneal space and drained later. Hemodialysis uses a dialyzer that filters the blood, removes waste products and excess fluids. It is a coil membrane and uses numerous hollow fibers to pump and filter the blood. It is done usually three times a week. Kidney transplants, you receive a replacement kidney from a family member or donor, which will allow you to live a normal life for many years.